a geometric sequence is going to have a different template than an arithmetic sequence. So what is a geometric sequence? It's a type of sequence where the ratio between the consecutive terms is a constant. So remember before when we were talking about the sequence going up as an adding by 6? Well now it's going to go up but we're going to multiply by 6. So that's where this ratio comes in. Every previous term is going to multiply by this ratio and then you're going to get the next consecutive term. So in this case you're going up by multiplying 6's um, but notice that you can also go down numbers and that's still by multiplying but you might multiply a fraction and that would give you a smaller number. Okay, so there's no division, it's just you're still multiplying, but it would be multiplying a fraction. Here's our template for a geometric sequence. This still represents a term value. N is going to be your term number. Your R is going to be your common ratio, so what's being multiplied each time. And then A is still your first term. So it's very similar to what we've seen before. Um, the only differences are obviously the equation and there's no D, it's an R this time. So let's see if it works. Um, the second term is 30. So when n is 2 for the second term, 2 minus 1 is 1. So r, your 6, because it was multiplying by 6's each time, is to the power of 1. And 6 to the power of 1 is just 6. That 6 times the 5 is going to give you 30. Okay, so it does work. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you the exact same questions that we saw in the arithmetic sequence video and you'll see that, I mean, the process is still the same. Okay, so the first type of question is if I give you a sequence, I want you to give me the formula. Once you have your formula, you might be able to give me some random term. Okay, so let's create the formula first. Here is the geometric sequence. And if you didn't know by them telling you that it was geometric, I mean, you could see that it's multiplying 6's each time. So once I multiply a 6, I'm going to know that that's my R value. Let's put that right there. Also, my first term is A, and that's 2. Then we're going to put it into the geometric template. Okay, so the A is 2, R is 6, and we're not going to put anything for N because remember we just want this as um, almost like your dependent, independent, um, explicit formula. Okay, so we're going to leave your almost like your X and your Y blank. Then what you're going to do is once you have um, the number that you want for your X, or in this case your N, we're going to plug that in, and then we're going to solve for our Y, or in this case our T12. Okay, so you're just very, very important, don't, don't multiply those two. Remember, it's bed mass. You're going to take the 6 to the power first and then do the multiplication. I see it all the time. So this does not equal to 12 to the n minus 1. All right, and notice right here, that's what we're going to do. We're going to go 12 minus 1 and get the exponent first. Then you take the 6 to the power of 11 and then times a 2, not the 2 and the 6 together first. You're going to get huge numbers for geometric because that's what you should expect because you're multiplying 6 every time up until the 12th term. All right, the next type of question that we saw was given a sequence that ends, so remember we have an ending number, tell me how many numbers are in that sequence. So we know the first term, the second term, the third term, but I, I don't know what that is. That's the nth term. So we're going to put that as the nth term. That's the term value for the nth term. We don't know what n is. We know what the first term is. It looks like it's 3. And it also looks like it's multiplying negative 2 each time. So I get my r as negative 2. We're going to plug that into our formula. So your a goes in here, and then your r goes right in here. And then our tn goes at the end and we're going to start to solve. So remember, very important, do not multiply these two numbers together as negative 6. We're going to start bringing the numbers to the other side to solve for n. And we do that first by dividing the 3 out. So divide both sides by 3 and you get 64. And then what you're going to do is you want a common base. So 64 is the same negative 2 base to the power of positive 6. 
Okay, when both the bases are the same, we can then indicate that, remember the arrow, this exponent is equal to this exponent. Now we put the arrow because if someone were to read this, they would probably think, well, where'd the twos go? They didn't cancel out. We're just saying that, well, because these two are the same, the exponents must be the same. Okay, and then we solve for n, which is 7. That means that the seventh term is 192. The last question we went over in the last tutorial was um, when we were given two random terms, but we weren't told anything else. We don't know what our first term is, and we don't know what the common ratio is. So then how do we figure out an overall explicit formula to describe this sequence? They have to tell us a geometric sequence because in the other video, um, they told us it was an arithmetic sequence and we were able to then use that template. So remember, if you aren't told in this type of case, if it's arithmetic or geometric, you can't really do the question. Okay, so they have to tell you and then you know what type of template equations to use. Then you're gonna sub in what you know. The fifth term, which means n is five, is 1875 and that's what we put as tn. We don't know what a is and we don't know what r is but we can simplify this exponent just a little bit and we get 4 and that's going to make our first equation. Then we do the same to this guy, our seventh term. So we put 7 right there as our n and subtract these two and get 6 and then this is our tn right there. Okay, So I have my first equation, my second equation. I'm going to do elimination. It's just going to be a little bit different than you've seen before. Okay, I'm going to put the larger number and the smaller number on the top and bottom like this and I'm going to make them equal to this one over this one. So I'm just being very consistent with the colors. Okay, and then I'm going to start eliminating and we do that through division. So I divide the A's out and they disappear. I divide these guys out and I get 25. Then I'm going to divide R6 by R4. Now remember when you divide exponents with the same base you're going to subtract those exponents and you get R2. Then I'm going to take the square root of both sides and you know that the square root of 25 is a positive and negative 5. In this type of example we're going to have more than one answer. One answer with the positive 5 and one answer with the negative 5. So let's start with the positive 5 first. If R is positive 5 we're now going to figure out what our other unknown is a. So I'm going to take this one because it looks a little bit easier than this guy. And I'm going to sub in r, which was 5, into this one. So we have this right here, and we're looking for a now. I've put my r into the formula, and 5 to the power of 4 is 625. Then I'm going to divide this guy by 625, and I get a is 3. In this case, we have tn equals to positive 3, your r is positive 5, remember we don't multiply those together, to the power of n minus 1. But what if r was negative 5? Well, we're going to do that over here now. If r was negative 5, we're going to do the exact same thing and sub it into the first equation because it looks easier. We're going to sub that negative 5 in and oh, lo and behold, we still get a positive 625. Because remember that negative is also to the power of 4. That means that a is 3, but we do get a different formula because our ratio is negative 5. You could always check with your calculator, start with 3, start multiplying by 5, and see if your fifth term is this and your seventh term is this. Then try it again, start with 3, on your calculator multiply negative 5 a whole bunch of times and see if your fifth term is this and your seventh term is this. It should be correct. Okay, now the last example is just another one of those, but I wanted to show you that you might not have more than one answer all the time. So again, I just made my two equations, my red equation, my green equation, exactly the same as I did before. I put them on top of each other and started eliminating. So I cancelled out the a's and I divided those two and I got 27. r4 divided by r1 is r3 and I'm going to take the cubed root. Now when I take the cubed root of a positive, there is only one answer, which is positive 3. If that's the case, then that means I only sub in one r into one of the two equations at the top. So this one looks a little bit easier. I'm going to use that one. And I'm only going to get one a value. 
Okay, you're not going to get a negative 3 because negative 3 cubed does not give me a positive 27. So again, this one only has one answer. Okay, and that's the formula right there. Last time, don't multiply these two together. I cry when you do that.